Hello everybody! I'm going to show you how I would go about creating a monochromatic design using Adobe Illustrator. So I've actually already created like the basic design that I want to create by drawing a bunch of rectangles on the page over here. Um, I basically used the rectangle shape tool, rectangle tool over here, and I left the default setting at a white fill with a black outline, and I just clicked and dragged a bunch of shapes on, stacked them onto each other, um, so they're all kind of stacked over here and I'm pretty happy with my composition and this is what I want my final design to look like so I'm ready to start coloring it. On the left over here what I've done is I've drawn eight boxes all the same size. Um, I just kind of took one and then held down alt or option on the Mac to copy it four times and filled it with red because that's the color I want to create that I want to use for my monochromatic design. And then at the bottom I have um, a black square, a white square, a dark gray, and a light gray square. So the idea is here that I'm going to create a monochromatic design, meaning one hue. So one color, uh, in this case red, with variations in tints, tones, and shades of that color. So variations in value and saturation of one hue, this red hue. That's how we're going to create a monochromatic monochromatic design. That's what a monochromatic design means, is to have one hue with variations in value and saturation of that one hue. Um, so tints, tones, and shades of one hue, right? Get that? Okay, so it's very important to keep that in mind. So the way I'm going to actually mix to create my palettes over here is I'm going to use something called the blend tool. So um, what I'm going to do is go to Object, Blend, Blend Options, and um, I'm just going to kind of choose specified steps, and you can choose as many or as few steps as you would like. I've, I've selected six, and then I'm going to hit OK, and then I'm going to come over here to the Blend tool, pick this up, and it's kind of like a magical wand. All you have to do is go click, click, and it mixes your colors together in a handy little chart. Um, so we're going to do that again for the whites, and then once you do a chart, you're going to want to deselect it. Otherwise, if you click again, see how it kind of makes a mess. It sort of blends, it keeps blending one to the other. So just hit Control Z if you mess up. You can always hit Control Z to go back if you mess up in Illustrator. That's that's like the the very first thing you should learn about using Illustrator is Control Z. It's your it, Control Z will be your best friend if you ever mess up. You can always hit Control Z, go back to where you were, and you get a redo. So that's the beauty of it. Um, so then what I'm going to do now is grab the black selection tool and click anywhere on the artboard uh, on my, you know, in my composition here, and it deselects everything. So then I go back and select the blend tool again and click and click to do the third row, and then again the black arrow tool to click anywhere to deselect. When something is deselected, nothing is highlighted in blue, and when something is selected, notice it gets highlighted in blue when it's selected. So that's pretty much the only important thing to keep in mind with Illustrator is that if you want to change something, you have to select it first, and if you don't want to change something you have to deselect it. So just remember that you'll be good to go. Okay so I've mixed all of my uh, tints, shades, and tones of red here. I have tints adding white, tone, uh, shades adding black, and two variations of tones um, adding gray. So I have now some variations in value and saturation of one red hue. So what I'm going to do is now with the black arrow tool click and drag around to select all of these uh, uh, blends that I just created and I need to expand them so I'm going to go to object expand and I can just leave all these boxes checked you don't really need to know what all that means just uncheck them all basically what that's going to do is it's going to expand the blend so that you can then select the different colors within the blend individually so now all you can uh, the easy thing you can do to color in your design is grab your eyedropper tool um, to select a color and notice that it puts the color down here and then all you have to do is click and drag to place the color in the design and you don't even have to select the arrow tool to do that I've just got the eyedropper tool selected I click on a color take my mouse put it over this and then I can just place the color in the design so it's really just as simple as that and the beauty of this is that it's fully editable so once you do something it's very easy to undo it um, so I'm just gonna go around and click and the thing is you never really know how your colors are gonna look together until you put them together so it's always um, 
it's always kind of a trial and error thing. You're always just sort of uh, playing around with the colors and figuring out what looks best based on um, how they're functioning in your design. So you do end up having to do a, a, some degree of playing around with your design to get the right balance, to get the right color composition. So, you know, we're really thinking and focusing about on composing with color. Um, it's not just about, you know, uh, randomly selecting colors. It really is about thinking about how the colors interact with one another, how they balance with each other, um, how they're working together to create contrast, to create a focal point, etc. Um, something else that you would want to do is additionally think about changing that black stroke or the outline that surrounds your shapes. You might want to change the color of it. So for example, if I grab my black arrow tool and select this shape, I might want to come up here to the stroke and actually make the stroke a different color. Maybe I want to make it gray or maybe I want to make it um, thicker. You can make the stroke thicker by changing the thickness of it. Um, you can also eliminate the stroke entirely by going to the stroke menu bar, click on the little drop down arrow, and then what you need to do is select the box that has the um, white arrow, uh, or sorry, the, it's the white box with the red slash through it. So it's right here, this little box over on the far left, and basically that sets the stroke to none, which means that um, your stroke disappears. You don't, ha you no longer have a black outline around your box. Notice that for this square here, if I just set the stroke to none now, and I and I deselect everything, now there is no outline around that box. There is an outline around this box. Um, I could add an outline back to uh, this box, and I could make it a different color if I wanted to. But actually, I probably would want to make it a color that's in my monochromatic design. So I could make it a red color, and I could make it um, a lot thicker. And notice how that changes the design entirely. So, um, so play around with the stroke settings and um, see, uh, you know, how those affect the design because that can really um, change the characteristics of the design a lot. Um, so at the outline, the little black outline here, it's for this one here, right next to the fill box is the stroke box. Okay, one other thing I want to point out, um, in addition to playing with the colors using your charts over here, let's say you get to a point where you have played around with it as much as you can, but you're still not quite happy with the colors that you have and you want to tweak them a little bit more. You can use something called the hue, saturation, and brightness sliders. So um, come over here to the color palette and to find that, if you don't have it up on your um, screen, go to window and check the little um, box right here for color. So just uh, go to window color and make sure there's a check mark next to color. And what that does is it's going to open up this palette right here called the color palette. Then the next thing you want to do is click on the black drop down arrow and I'm going to move this over so you can see what's going on over here. And notice there are a bunch of different options. You want to select the one that's for HSB, for Hue, Saturation, and Brightness sliders. So the Hue, Saturation, and Brightness sliders give you the ability to manipulate, as you would, as you would probably guess, the Hue, Saturation, and the Brightness of your color. So you can play around with the color even further. So let's say um, I want to change this color. I'm going to manipulate it a little bit live. I can just select the box and then I can turn up the saturation if I want to um, change that. Now notice that the saturation slider actually is also changing the value of the color as well. So this saturation slider is not does not isolate saturation only. That is something you do have to keep in mind. It's not perfect. It's not um, it's not going to isolate the saturation. It's also going to lighten the value, so we just have to be aware of that. It's kind of like a combination of a tints and a tone slider. And then you have the B brightness slider, which um, kind of is like a shades slider. It actually changes the uh, shades or, or the, the shade of your color because it adds black to your color. So um, use these as well to manipulate the colors to see how you're affecting the composition. Um, you can change the fill color or you can also change the the stroke color as well by just clicking on one or the other. Um, so in this case I'm going to change the fill color. I'm going to make it brighter and lighter. Let's see, I want to make it really light I think. Kind of like almost like the lightest color but not too light. This color I think I want to make 
more pink and a little bit darker. So, so you know, you can work on balancing things out here. So this would be an example here where I could change the foreground uh, uh, color like this, the fill color um, like this, or I could change the the stroke color like this um, by selecting the stroke and changing that the color of the outline. So this is a good way to play around with the the balance, overall balance of how things are working in your composition. Um, to check your design. Now, um, something else that uh, you want to keep in mind is um, that uh, once you get to this point, you'll probably want to uh, present your work in a neat and tidy way. And uh, probably what you'll want to do is end up selecting your gradients over here and um, maybe moving them to the side so they're not on your um, uh, canvas when you present your work, but you can still keep them. You don't have to delete them because you'll want to save an Adobe Illustrator copy of your design um, in the native format, .ai format, and then you'll want to export a JPEG. And when you export the JPEG, you click on the artboard tool to kind of crop and zoom in just on the design itself to present and then um, that way this part is what gets exported so even though I still have my charts over here to the left see my charts that are still on the screen they're not within the format of the of the selection that's going to get exported so now when I go to file save for web and devices um, control minus so you can see notice that this is all that gets exported and presented to the class so you can select JPEG leave the quality at 100 percent click on save and give your file a name and then you'll have this design presented to class so um, have fun playing around with that and um, just remember that for monochromatic compositions you uh, will leave the H which is the hue leave the hue slider on its set value so you won't be changing the hue you'll just be changing the S and the B saturation and brightness uh, for tints shades and tones